Yeah, not gonna lie. I've worked some really awful jobs, but next to nothing has had me feeling this kind of anxiety before going in. Hell, I remember puking every morning before going to my call center healthcare job. Getting screamed at and told you're the reason some boomer is going to die, all because their heart medication was denied by the insurance and they had to pay three dollars. It's really not fun, like at all. But I would honestly take it again at this point, if it paid the same as this place. Went in last night to clean after the prayer meetings. Except I went in a little early to see if I could actually catch William, maybe see if I could get through the blue door. Didn't work, mind you. Think he's being a lot more secretive about something than he lets on. I approached him after the last of the older men left, giving a hearty wave and see you Wednesday along with it. Pastor William started to walk back to his office as I was starting to get my usual cleaning supplies out. The sun was still up, so I was planning on hitting this place quick and getting the hell out before it got dark again. Never thought I would be thankful for the sun staying up until nine in the summer. But here we are. Before he could walk into the hall, I got his attention, asking if he wanted me to clean up the room behind the blue door. He just kind of smiled. There was this look I just couldn't quite place. Maybe concern. Then he gave me some BS answer about how he had done a spring cleaning back in May, so not to worry about that. Just focus on the areas where people move through and keep things nice, that's all I need to do. A little weird, but whatever. Then he dropped the huge bomb that they're hosting a wedding tomorrow, so I'm going to need to do a deep clean. Damn. I was not prepared for this. I tried making up some excuse about not being able to do it tonight because of a family event or something, and he just told me to come back after the event was over. Said he absolutely needs it cleaned by tomorrow. I didn't have anything with me. I wasn't going to drive the 30 minutes to get back home either with my busted air conditioner. There wasn't much choice, so I just started doing whatever I could and doing it fast. I swear. I've never cleaned that fast in my life, dusting corners, scrubbing down filthy baseboards. They wanted me to pull out a whole damn carpet cleaner. Before I knew it, the sun had gone down without me realizing. The church lights were so bright with the stained glass that it was hard to notice when it got dark, but now it felt like the lights were a haven. Phone said it was around 9.30, so not much time since sundown. That's when I realized I forgot to bring my phone charger, which was just really fantastic. The cherry on top of the whole thing, you know. At least it still had about half the batter. Put it in power saver and just hit work even harder. It wasn't until I was cleaning windows that it started getting weird. Maybe 30 minutes later, I was up on the stepladder, going down the stained glass windows with a soft rag and warm water, getting ungodly amounts of dust, may I add, when something suddenly thumped hard against the window. Honestly, with how hard it hit, I don't know how the window didn't break. Sounded like a whole cinder block, but it must have hit just right on the window trim to absorb the impact. Almost made me fall off the ladder, though. Hell, I was barely saved thanks to the clumsy recovery reflexes I've honed all my life. It took me a minute, but I steeled myself and went out the front door, looking right around the corner to where the window was. There was a street light that illuminated the entire side, giving me a pretty clear view. Nothing was there, though, only the small, worn-down graveyard a few feet away from the church, made even creepier by the shadows being cast from the saturated light of a sodium bulb. That was about the time I noticed one of the shadows longer than the other. When I looked back toward the cemetery, there was a tall, dark-suited man with a wide-brimmed hat just kind of standing in front of one of the graves. I'm gonna throw this out there. If you want intricate details of the rest of the night, you're not going to get a lot. Things are still a massive blur and I'm completely freaked out. This is all from what I can remember in the very rapid escalation that came next. Obviously, seeing The Undertaker making his WWE return in the middle of a graveyard was not on my agenda last night, 
I ran inside so damn fast I should be on a plane to the Paris Olympics right now. Okay? I need you to understand just how little I am willing to mess around with whatever is going on here. I got right back in there and locked that door, deadbolted it, whatever I needed to do. Whatever the hell was in here might just be some spooky spirit stuff, but that thing out there could very well be an IRL murderer. Look, if I'm going to die, let it be by some instant 13 ghosts mess. I'm not chill with being murdered by a human. They can be really messed up. Locked, dead bolted, didn't stop there. I flipped every light switch on and ran down the hall into William's office, shut that door, and dead bolted the heck out of it too. Then I grabbed my phone and started to make a call to whatever officer they would send out here, except I'm in the middle of nowhere. No damn signal, and somehow, even though I put power mode on, I'm at 15% on my battery. I tried calling the cops again, and my phone died right then and there. At this point, I am decidedly not chill, and am debating whether it's my best move to just hide in here or risk getting to my car. It took me a few minutes, but I started to kind of calm down and try to rationalize everything. It was probably a gravestone, right? like a taller one with one of those weird sculptures on it. I've never looked too close at it to be able to tell, to be honest. Not especially planning on it unless it's high noon and the sun is shining. This was not that time, so I decided that for now, we're safe in here, and we're just gonna chalk all this up to being a big misunderstanding late at night. Nerves going a few fewer miles per hour, I decided to go back to cleaning windows. That was about all that was left other than cleaning the baptism pool, and that was as simple as a quick scrub since it didn't seem to be used often. All good. We're getting through this. I'm sorry I start talking in the plural when I'm freaked out. Washing the windows was going okay, but I still kept the deadbolt and everything on the door, and every light on. All good. All fine. No worries just wiping the window. Then came the screaming ice in my damn veins. It was a woman, I think. All I know is it was guttural, like the sound of grief in the rawest form. I don't know what the cause of the scream was, but I could tell it was in the building. It took me a minute to get moving again, but I had to know if I was right. It was still going too, with few stops in between the loud roars of anger and despair. I was right. I wish I wasn't, but it was coming from behind the blue door. It kept going too, but it sounded so far away down there that I'm not really sure how it could. Unless there's some massive concrete bunker under here, I don't know how anything more than a crawl space could be under there. Then it stopped. I was in the hallway at that point, and I was in the middle of trying to rip myself in half so I could run away. There was that one nagging little feeling that this could be someone who was in trouble. I can't just leave someone here if something is going on. That would make me just as responsible, wouldn't it? I swear, if my mama hadn't raised me, I would have been gone faster than my dad. I knocked on the door, giving a second to see if there was any response. It was only a moment until there was a faint answer. Like a hello, I think. I kind of chased down my courage and shouted through the door, asking who they were. No answer. I knocked on the door again, and still nothing. I gave it one more good knock, figuring the third time was the charm. Turns out, that's BS. Right as I let the third knock go, things went to hell. The lights flickered briefly at first, but they kept going sporadically never actually goes off for more than seconds at a time, but always flickers on just enough to mess with my vision. My eyes were doing that thing where you can't see in the dark after coming in from the bright sun, making everything in the dark vague. I turned around, ready to find my way out of the church and just say hell with this for the night. Except I turned back toward the sanctuary to leave and saw an entire congregation standing there before the lights flickered off again. I'm proud to report I did not, despite popular reports, soil myself in that moment. Instead, I screamed like a damned Looney Tunes character and started running for my keys sitting on the first pew. 
Thankfully, the lights came back on steadily, and it was no longer occupied by whatever ghostly churchgoers were there just seconds before. I thought I had caught a break, thought I was going to grab my keys and make the run to the car. Water started splattering behind me. The baptism pit was running, quickly splashing as the tub filled. I took a gulp, turned around, and that's about when things went shining on me. Deep crimson was pouring out of the faucet, interspersed with intense blasts of a rusty, dirty, black-like swamp water. I wanted to throw up right then and there, seeing all the crimson splattering everywhere against the white backdrop. I'm not really religious, but a baptism pit filling with blood seems a little… sacrilegious, I guess. I wasn't waiting around to debate the ethical implications of a bloody ghost bath, though. I turned around to grab my keys, which were still sitting on the pew. Mistake number two. Face to face. I don't know who it was, I don't know what it was. All I know is that I was face to face with one of the dozens of good church patrons that now filled the sanctuary. The sound that came out of me was like a car hitting the brakes at 70 miles an hour. I'm certain every dog in the Tri-County area must have perked up because this thing still haunts me, like it's burned into my mind because it was right there in my face, almost nose to nose if it had one. The face was waxy, almost like eggshell white skin. Not scary by itself, but the dark, hollow sockets instead of eyes were what really got me. I expected to be staring into thin air, but I'm seeing into the back of this thing's skull. That was when it opened its mouth, rancid, decayed breath blowing into my face. If I had eaten anything since yesterday morning, I might have puked then and there. When it opened its mouth, I snatched my keys off the pew and tore off down the middle aisle. Sounds from hell were what started all around me. The organ came to life, screeching and out of tune. Then came the singing, that same damn hymnal as the last time. Started wishing I hadn't deadbolted and chained the door when I was too shaky to pull it open, but somehow I got out of there and tore the hell out of the parking lot. And here we are. I've been up for hours on end because I can't get that face out of my mind. Not to mention I still don't know what the hell was going on behind that blue door. That scream sounded human, and I could swear I heard someone saying hello after the first knock. I don't know what to trust anymore, though, after this morning. I got a text from William. Know what it said? Because I expected it to read along the lines of, What in the hell happened here? Nope. Wow, cleanest I've seen this place in years. Amazing job, thank you. What the hell? I'm going to do some research, maybe see if I can find anything on the cemetery or the church. Hell, I'm about to look into William himself. Something doesn't sit right about him. And yes, I know, there are going to be some people asking me why I don't just quit or break the lock. Number one. I am so damn poor, y'all. Like, I get why the job pays so much now, but the chances of me finding anything else right now are slim. My landlord is chomping at the bit to evict me so he can raise the rent again. Second of all, honestly, if it gets down to it, I might. I don't know what the hell is past that door, but if things start looking like there may be someone, I'm not past some vandalism. Anyway. I'm off until tomorrow night after Wednesday's service. I'll probably try to do an early clean again in the daylight, so I don't deal with this again. I'll update if anything happens, but I really don't plan on being there overnight again until I absolutely have to.